Hello, and welcome to Career Infusion. Career Infusion is brought to you through The Lofty Group, a consulting company that focuses on career and organizational leadership development. I'm very pleased today to present to you as the host, I'm Tracy Kane Lofty, and our guest for today is Mrs. Maryland, United States, 2017, Katia Avdiv. Hi. <laughs> Katia is a wife, mother, fashion designer, and owner of her own custom clothing brand, Katia Adiv Couture. She is the owner, executive producer, also of her own TV show, Design Your Life with Katia Adiv. And she is also, as I mentioned earlier, the reigning Mrs. Maryland, United States 2017. Even though her business is less than three years old, her clothes have sold in boutiques all over the country, and she has shown her collections during DC Fashion Week, DC Swim Week, New York Fashion Week, as well as participated in numerous fashion galas and fundraisers. Her dresses have been published in US and international magazines, such as Fashion Most, Sheba, Creative Knitting, Belle New York, Emerge, and more. Her costumes have won numerous awards at national and international competitions, including Best Costume Award at Mrs. DC America 2016, Most Whimsical Costume at Mrs. America 2016, Best Costume at Mrs. Maryland United States, and her costume even represented Team USA at United Nations Pageant and also took first place. Her dresses have been seen at Miss Virginia, Mrs. America, Mrs. United States, Miss United States, Miss Earth, Mrs. Universal, Miss United Nations, as well as lots of state beauty pageants. Besides having her own show about fashion design, she also has appeared on a TV show, Say Yes to the Prom on TLC, NBC News, Good Morning Washington on WUSA, Society Moms, talk show, as well as had her clothes on Real Housewives of Potomac on Bravo TV. Katia, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here today. And I would imagine that by the time this show is over, we'll probably seem like best friends. Um, many people know that I was Mrs. District of Columbia, United States, 2016. And so I really welcome you to the show uh, representing the Mrs. United States pageant. Thank you, Tracy. Yes. And congratulations to you. I watched the tape. I watched the video from last year pageant. You were amazing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the national experience for sure. Thank you. Thank you. So Katya, tell us a little bit about yourself. I actually just read your bio. Mm -hmm. But one thing I did not mention is your platform. Mm -hmm. My platform is Helping Homeless, and it's something that's very dear to my heart because not a lot of people know that I was homeless myself. And for a long time, I was embarrassed to admit it. You know, it's not something <laughs> you tell to everyone. But then I looked at it, and actually pageantry made me look at it at a very different angle, saying that, well, you know what? It doesn't matter where you came from. It's life, and things happen. But what matters is the way you pull yourself up the way you work towards your goals, towards your dreams. And this is something I want to emphasize as being Mrs. Maryland, that it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, how tall or short you are. It doesn't even matter if you speak perfect English or have an accent like me. What matters is the desire to get to where you want to be, desire to help people or to have your own business or to have a family, whatever it is that drives you, just don't stop, just don't keep going. And that's what I want to mostly advertise as the Mrs. Maryland United States. Thank you. Thank you. You will definitely be a, a true inspiration. And part of career infusion really is to empower people to pursue their professional mm -hmm. goals. We want people to also find their passion and find what motivates them and really pursue that. And so you have really just a rich background in the fashion industry. So I'm wondering, yeah. when did you find your passion? Well, fashion is something that I loved my whole life, but I didn't really think that it would become my career, even though I'm extremely happy it did. <laughs> 
What I started sewing when I was a little girl because my parents we couldn't really afford clothes. And as a girl, of course, you want to look nice. So what I was doing, I was trying to figure out ways to look good, to have nice stuff to wear. So I used my mom's old dresses or even pillowcases, uh, curtains, whatever fabric material I could find around the house and around my grandma's house, I would just figure out a way to transform it into an outfit. So I never went to school for it. I never had proper training. So this is something that was just in me <laughs> from the beginning, I guess. And um, I have a business degree in accounting and marketing, which I thought would be sort of my backup plan in life. So I was thinking, if fashion doesn't work out, which fashion is something you either love it or you hate it, someone in the design sense, I wasn't sure if my fashion sense would be um, liked by public. So I got a business degree, but while I was studying it, I kept sewing, I kept um, doing stuff that keeps me going, that puts my heart on fire. <laughs> so yeah, so gradually, it di I didn't plan it this way, but I wore a few of my outfits to an event, and then people saw it, and they reached out just saying, hey, can you make it for us? I'm like, sure. And then it gradually built up and built up, and I started getting more clients, and it turned into a career. <laughs> Well, your gowns are absolutely beautiful, and Thank you. her gowns have appeared just about <laughs> everywhere. So yeah. where do you get your inspiration for the designs? Uh, um, you know, I get this question a lot. <laughs> and it's hard to answer, because I know a lot of people that go to art museums or flower um, stores or look at something online. For me, it's a little different. Sometimes I see a fabric and it screams to me, oh, I want to become this dress. <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain. You just kind of see it. Or sometimes I, get, I see a client, and they don't really know what they want, but they just tell me, just make something unique for us. And after talking to them, um, I get the personality. Like, is it a girly girl? Is it a tomboy girl? Is it somebody who wants to be on the conservative side? Is it somebody who likes more sexy, bright, loud outfit. So after talking to them, I try to express their personality in an outfit. So it's hard to answer where the inspiration comes from. I would say from people and also fabric. So do they uh, sometimes, do your customers sometimes give you like the concept and mm -hmm. then you take it from there? Yes, usually not the first time. Usually when people come to me for the first time, they kind of have an idea of what they want. And then after they see what I can do, they just, it happens a lot to me. They just tell me, okay, I need a dress for this event. Just do whatever you want. Whatever color and outfit, I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be me. It's going to be my mm -hmm. dress, which my, somebody else might not necessarily like it, but this would be the right dress for that person. So Katya <laughs> is now wearing the gowns uh, that she sells to her clients. <laughs> and so I'm wondering, it's almost like you've now become the, your client. And, and what is that um, like now that you are actually wearing your gowns? Um, I think I'm the toughest judge when it comes to anything related to design. And the same when designing for me. When I was designing the gown for my Mrs. Maryland competition, it actually, even though I was planning everything about a year beforehand, my um, fitness and the swimsuit and um, questions and costume and everything else, but when it, as far as gowns, I just, I just didn't know. Nothing was good enough. No colors were good enough. No, it, it was crazy. And everybody kept asking me, even the months before the pageant, they kept asking me, so what color is your gown? And I'm like, guys, I don't know. There is no gown yet. And they thought I was joking. I just didn't want to share, but I really didn't have a gown <laughs> until about a week before the wedding, um, the wedding, a week before the pageant, I started planning it. I had an idea in my hand, in my head. I got all the fabrics and I started making it literally three days before the pageant. And everybody thought it was insane. <laughs> Which, that's, yeah. That's no. great. That's great. That <laughs> really means you're a professional if you can make a gown three days prior to an event. Thank you. Yeah. I, I tried my best. It was like almost 24 hours continuous sewing. <laughs> So how did you really, though, start your business? You said that you wore, you mm -hmm. wore your gowns and people saw them and then mm -hmm. uh, they would ask you to make a gown. But how did you really launch your business? It was very gradually. So I didn't even think it would become a business. I thought it would be a hobby. And I started when uh, my son is now three years old. And I started when he was one. 
roughly about one because I was I was planning to be a stay home mom for a few years, but my husband he saw that I needed that creative outlet. He 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 knows me of course, and he saw that I was struggling to trying to be the best mom and not having my creative part. He saw that, so he just asked me, "Do you just want to maybe?" let him go to daycare part-time and just make something for fun for yourself. And of course, it's like, yes, <laughs> absolutely, yes. And I start making, I made a few, and then people start asking me, oh, so you make gowns now, can I order one? And I thought, okay, why not? Sure, I love that. I love that creative challenge every time I get a new client, I get excited like uh -huh. a kid. So it just gradually became more and then we had to give him to a full to a daycare to a full day then we had to get some help from nanny as well and then it just I just keep getting more and more clients right now we are in the beginning of May and I have a wait list until mid-October amazing so that's it's I'm trying to figure out a way to hire more people and just so that so so that people don't have to wait for half a year to get a gown from me, but I'm very flattered that somebody who just started three years ago, ha actually two years ago, to have it on a business professional level that I have such a long wait list of people. <laughs> That's great. Now yeah. I'm wondering, are you able to look at the body type of a contestant? Let's say you're working with a con contestant, a client. Are you able to look at the body type? Mm -hmm. Because I know I tried on many, many gowns, and I actually ended up buying my gown from a store called Shears in Pocomoke City, Maryland, a beautiful emerald beautiful green, green, I remember. Yes, a beautiful <laughs> emerald green gown, and however, um, you know, my size six and eight is very different than contestants, especially younger contestants, size two mm -hmm. and four, and so, you know, I had to really pick something that would flatter my mm -hmm. um my figure so how do you go about selecting the style as a designer i usually i suggest but most people um especially pageant ladies who have competed before they kind of know what colors look good on stage what colors look good on them specifically what colors don't look on them don't look good on them so there are a combination of factors i try to suggest because how do i really tell a person hey, you need to wear something different to hide something. You can't. But um, I would suggest that, okay, maybe we should try, what if we try this silhouette? Let's see how it looks. And I usually have a few gowns in my studio where people can, first of all, they can see the quality of my work. They can actually feel the fabric and see the beading and see the inside of the dress to see what it looks like because that's important too, right? And they can also try different silhouettes, not necessarily the color that they would pick, but see... Does the mermaid look good on me? Does the ball gown look good on me? Maybe I should go, go with something high-low or something with a long train. So it really depends on the person, but I can tell you this, that a dress can do wonders to a body. A, right, um, a rightfully constructed dress, when it's done properly, when it's fitted, when it's you know, tight in the right places, it can do magic. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering, uh, I'm sure a lot of people watching the show are thinking uh, you're absolutely stunning. Aww. So I'm wondering uh, for for those who are, let's say they have a special event coming up, not necessarily in a pageant, what is the best beauty advice that you can give? Hmm. Be yourself. And this is something that when I heard for the first time, actually from another pageant contestant, I thought to myself, okay, what does it really mean? But when, the more I'm into this business, the more people I meet, the more uh, beauty events I attend, it really makes a difference when somebody is trying to look like somebody else or act like, or don't act like themselves. Like when somebody is wearing extra tall, high heels, where they don't really wear them in real life, you can tell they're struggling. They are, they are, you can feel the pain. And the same when somebody is wearing a hairstyle that they're not used to, you can feel that every time they're trying to fix it, you, you can feel the nervousness. So my advice would be to be yourself. Just find a way to, so that when you feel comfortable, it, it comes across. You, you talk this way, you look at people this way. Just be yourself, because there's only one of you. Nobody else is like you. Just be you. <laughs> very good, very yeah. good. So now you're in the Mrs. United States 
uh, mm. pageant system now. And one thing I really like about this pageant is it includes women of all ages. Mm -hmm. um, I was more of the senior at, <laughs> at, at 50. I will be 51 this year, but at 50, okay. I was in the pageant <laughs> last year. And so I'm wondering, you know, what made you decide to go with the Mrs. United States pageant instead of another system? Uh, well, the reason why I got involved in pageantry, actually, well, there were two. <laughs> One, um, I wanted to expand my business a little because that's pageant gowns is a big part of um, what I do. And second, I was so inspired by some of the girls that I met through pageantry. They are stories. They are um, community involvement, that to me, they were this elite group that inspire people that are always, they always look great, they always have the best outfits, the best hair and makeup, they're always happy, they're always smiling, they always do these great things, and I just wanted to be part of it. So when I first entered, I didn't really know, I was, I kind of pretended like I knew, even though I, I was a newbie in that, but it was just so positive and exciting and inspiring. And in our crazy world where you hear all this horrible news every day, you want this positive you know, light in your daily life. <laughs> so that was my reason for entering it. And I would encourage every single lady to try it. Because if, well, the only requirements are that you have to live or work or go to school in the state that you're competing and you're a US citizen. There is no age, and you have to be married, of course, <laughs> but there is no age or weight or height or skin color or hair color or nationality or anything or your profession. There are no rules. Just be you. Embrace you, your culture, your personality. Right, right. Well, and what I like, too, about the pageant business, there is also there are quite a few systems have the Ms. Mm -hmm. pageant as well for the uh, more mature woman. And uh, the, uh, so it's not just the Miss, a Miss pageant or a junior Miss pageant. So there's many different tiers of these national pageants. And so I'm wondering too, with your current reign right now, what is your greatest challenge in to, to juggle all of this? You're, you're a wife, you're a business mm -hmm. owner, fashion designer. How do you juggle everything? It's a challenge. It's not easy. I'm not going to lie and say it's easy. It's not. But it's something that if you have it in your heart, you'll find a way to do it. Like I have a um, toddler and um, my son uh, and my, my husband, he likes home cooked food. So this is something I have to do almost daily. But we find ways to, to blend it all together. For example, today, they came with me today, and so we were sitting in the car, we were dancing in the car while we were driving, having a family Sunday fun. And then we go to the grocery store together, we make an event out of it. So we also sing songs, or we learn a new poem with the sun or something. So it's how you, I mean, there is always a way to make it work. You can always make it work. It doesn't matter how crazy our lives are and how many responsibilities and you know things we have during the day. If you want it, you can have it all. Just be creative. Like for example, my son, he was learning colors in a fabric store. When I was buying fabric for my clients for dresses, he was just I'm like I was asking him, "Okay, so what color is this one? What is, what shade of green is that one? How would you call it? Or what size is bigger, this one or this one?" So just find a way. Right. <laughs> there is always a way. Right. If, and, and remember <laughs> that, listeners uh, and viewers, if you want it bad enough, you will make it happen. And that goes really Absolutely. for anything mm -hmm. within your uh, endeavors, anything that you are pursuing. You really do have to make it a priority and you have to have a passion for mm -hmm. it. So uh, one yeah. thing you mentioned earlier, and that is that you do have an, a degree mm -hmm. in accounting. And so I really encourage everyone, uh, you know, to have a formal education if they are pursuing mm -hmm. their own business. It's great to have that foundation because you have a great understanding. So by you having your business, mm -hmm. you have the foundation. And so I'm wondering what words of wisdom do you have for individuals who are uh, planning to launch their own business? Huh. That's a good question because as we all know, when you start your own business, it doesn't come with a manual. What was news to me, um, 
when I've opened my fashion design business, I didn't realize that the business side of it is at least 50%, maybe even more than the creative side. Because originally, I was thinking that, okay, I know how to sew, I know how to make patterns, I know how to make dresses for different sizes, different age groups from, I know how to sew different kinds of fabrics, I know where to buy them, I can figure it out. <laughs> well, was I wrong? <laughs> Let me say this. Um, there is a lot of business strategy involved. There is a lot of marketing, a lot of um, advertising. There's just a lot of components that I didn't know of. And that's where, like you said, education is very important because it, teach, it teaches you a lot of things. It teaches you to see the whole picture, not just focus on one little part of the business, but it, it shows you the overall. It teaches you to speak, it, your language, well, for me, it was rele very relevant <laughs> to better my English and to be able to speak in public. Because I'm originally, I'm from Belarus, which is part of Russia. And in my country, public speaking is not, um, it's not taught in school. It's not a big deal in school. And even when we write essays, we're not taught different how to form your opinion, how to back up your opinion. And this is something that's very important in America in whatever area you do. To, to talk, to be, able to, to, to be able to articulate what you're trying to say so people will take you seriously. So I would absolutely encourage everyone to, have, to go to school. I know sometimes there is a financial issue or um, time issue, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, Everybody have different stories, but if you are able, I would absolutely encourage you to do so. Yes, and I would also like to add to that that it's a great idea to take a course in communications if mm -hmm. you can, and whether or not you're going to be a national speaker or not, just being out there as the face of your business, you want to have excellent communication skills. And so if your budget is limited, my suggestion is that you just simply record yourself. Make perhaps a three to five minute speech recording yourself and then have your friends critique That's the presentation. Idea. That's a great idea actually. <laughs> yes, my uh, very first management job, I was fortunate enough that the executive director had everyone in management to participate in a full day communications workshop. At the first thought, everybody thought, oh, what are we doing this for? But I look back on that years later, and that was one of the best things I could have done because I was videotaped and critiqued by the consultant who was leading the session. For example, one thing I always remember is that um, the facilitator pointed out that I said get instead <laughs> of get. And so that is, I believe, part of my Eastern Shore, mm -hmm. Maryland slang <laughs> <laughs> uh, of, of way of talking. Probably if you were to drop me off now back on the Eastern Shore, I'd go back to saying get. But um, so it's those types of things you don't realize you're saying that on a daily basis. So it really right. takes someone else to critique your presentation. And um, we are going to take a short break here. And I want to again point out to you that today's presentation, which focuses on uh, a glimpse into the pageant world, is brought to you through the Lofty Group. And for more information about the Lofty Group, you can go to theloftygroup.com. We'll take a, about a two minute break. Thank you.
Welcome back to Career Infusion. I'm your host, Tracy Kane Lofty. Again, we are joined by Mrs. Maryland, United States, Katia Adif. Katia is wearing a beautiful gold and black gown, which she actually designed. And her designs have appeared in numerous fashion magazines and in numerous fashion shows. And so we should all be inspired. She's able to juggle all of this. She represents the state of Maryland. She's a fashion designer. She is a mother, a wife, and just successful businesswoman. So again, welcome back. Thank you. (laughs) So you really have just begun your reign. When did you actually become Mrs. Maryland United States? It was February 28th. So it's been a few months. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And it's been amazing. It's once in a lifetime experience. And this is something I would encourage every lady, every married lady in the state of Maryland who's thinking about it, you should absolutely go for it. You're going, you will have memories that you will remember for life. And so far, it has been, I know it just started, and I'm still preparing for nationals, which is a big deal, <laughs> happening in Orlando in a little less than two months, which I'm very excited, stressed, uh, uh, running around doing all the crazy stuff about. But yeah, I think it's once in a lifetime experience. So I can recall uh, preparing, and I remember just working out like crazy yes. <laughs> almost every single day because I knew I had to wear the swimsuit. So how are you preparing for nationals? Well, like you mentioned swimsuit and fitness is a big part of it. And I'm very lucky to have an amazing, amazing personal trainer, my sponsor, Reggie. And we have been working out for roughly about a month now. We still have two, mo- two more months to go. So he's the guy who's in charge of getting me in shape. (laughs) And of course, you have to have a lot of outfits, like you said. Roughly about 20-ish outfits we need for the National Week because people don't realize it's not just one event where you um, model a gown, you wear a swimsuit, and an opening number. There is a lot more. They have a lot more events for contestants, and every time you need to look good, you need to wear something that represents you. And of course, I'm a fashion designer, so this is something being different every day, something that would represent me. So that's a big part of it. Okay, so Katia was actually in the state pageant, in the Maryland state pageant, and now you're preparing for the nationals, as you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, how is preparing for the state pageant different than preparing for nationals? From what I've heard, I've never been to na- I've never done a national pageant yet. But from what I've heard, that girls are fierce there. Everybody wants that crown, so girls are preparing. They are there to win it. So you need to be a few levels up from where you think you should be. So every category you need to be. You think your body's in shape. You need to get better. So you you're, so one thing is working working out working in preparation out is, for the nationals. This is a must. Yes, it's working out is a must. And then, of course, practicing your interview, practicing your um, question, your on-stage question, doing the community involvement, because that's the point of being Mrs. Maryland. It's a privilege, but it's also a job. And it's something that we should do daily. Like, um, one of the things that I do, uh, we are feeding homeless on Sundays, actually, in um, Georgetown Ministry at 12 o'clock almost every Sunday. And this is something that I have been doing long before I started my pageant journey. And I'm gonna keep doing it long after the pageant is gone. So, and besides this, there are different appearances that you need to do. There are different activities that you need to participate. And then there's always also family and business, juggling juggling it all together. (laughs) So are you, uh, the state of Maryland is not that large. However, when you have to travel to all of these places, you think, oh my goodness, how much farther can it possibly be? <laughs> have you been, been seeing most of the state of Maryland or uh, mainly like the east side of Maryland? Mm, mainly, yes. Mainly the side that's closest to D.C., the D.C. surroundings, and also Baltimore. There are quite a few events happening in Baltimore and, of course, Annapolis, our capital. 
I'm going to have a parade there um, shortly on the Memorial Day weekend, which I'm looking forward to. Okay, well, please do make it a point to go to the eastern shore of Maryland, my yes. hometown, which is the most beautiful side of Maryland, I must say, all of the beautiful oceans and farms. It's really tranquilizing. Will do. Okay, <laughs> so now, uh, do you have any particular... Um, uh, projects coming up soon with your gowns where you're in, in, in any fashion shows? Well, usually last year I had quite a few fashion shows that I was and the fundraisers that I was a part. And recently there actually was a big one, one of the biggest fundraising events in DC, Fashion for Pause, where um, all the donated money, which were close to $300,000 in 12 weeks, which is a lot, I think. Um, that goes to homeless animals, to homeless shelters. And then I'm going to have a few fundraisers around the year. They don't usually try to... There's only so much I can speak, I can talk about them until they start the main advertising campaign, but yes, I will be a part. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, I really want to point out that pageants really are more than just wearing more than wearing beautiful gowns and beautiful clothes it's really about promoting your platform and like you have a business and so you know you're able to promote not only your platform but your business as well so if you have an important message that you really want to share with the world pageantry is one way to do that absolutely. would you agree absolutely yes Okay, and then um, you also spoke on uh, earlier, on the earlier segment of the show, about how at one time you were homeless, and that is your platform mm -hmm. now. Um, so are you going out into the schools, or was it more about the community activism? Yes, well, uh, for me, my personal story, um, let me elaborate on this a little bit. When I got to this country 14 years ago, I didn't have any money, I had no relatives, no friends, no job, no house, nothing. It was basically just me, my suitcase, and my big dreams of hoping to ever make it in this world. And what I've learned is um, hard work is very important. And also, there are people who helped me along the way, random people who didn't know me. But um, there was one lady who let me use a shower in her house to, when I was homeless and sleeping in a park. And then there are people who help you with a job or help you get an outfit so you can get a job. And those random acts of act of kindness have a lot more impact than people think. And this is something I want to emphasize. When um, we do those lunches in homeless shelter, I get so inspired by people there. They, they are phenomenal. Some of them have degrees and some of them have great ideas. And you would be surprised. I mean, unfortunately, in America, a lot of families are just one paycheck away from being homeless. This is cruel life. And I get inspired by those people when I hear their stories. And I think, well, maybe they just need a little extra help like at this moment to keep their lives back on track. So this is something having a crown gives you. It's like a microphone. People want to hear what you have to say and this is a great way to advertise for a platform and I have um, some some people follow me on social media and when I advertise the events that I do or the volunteer work that I do they want to get involved and this melts my heart when especially when young kids when they come up to me and they say hey I follow you on, so on Facebook and I saw that you're doing this event in um, this senior center I would like to join, and of course, absolutely, I would love to, and this is amazing that even the younger generation, they want to be inspired, they want to help others, they want to be in our community and help our community. Probably one of the greatest impacts of my life really was uh, helping to feed the homeless when I was joining my the sorority that I'm a member of. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. One of the things that we had to do was actually go to a homeless shelter and feed the homeless. And that really had a major impact on my life. And um, I just encourage everyone, you know, give to your community, give back to the community. And so many of the people, you know, all of us could be one paycheck away from being in the same situation. And for some, you know, they, there may be the mental 
mental health issues affiliated with that. But in a lot of instances, no, it's just where um, sometimes they don't have any family around and they've just had a, a series of um, negative issues to occur. And so please do give back to the community. Now you mentioned that you're on social media. Yes. And so how could someone contact you or, or follow you if they wanted to? Well, just Google, um, find my name on Facebook. There aren't that many Katyas <laughs> with the last name of Dave, A-V-D-E-E-V. -E -E and it's the same for the website, the same for uh, Instagram. And also I have pages for Mrs. Maryland United States. So any of those, I usually post the same information everywhere because I know different people different, follow different media platforms and different accounts, so I just post the same things everywhere. And I'm usually very transparent about stuff that I do or events that I attend. I want people to know more, to get involved, to help. That, that's the point <laughs> of being Mrs. Maryland. Yes. And this show, like many of the other shows of Career Infusion, will be posted to theloftygroup.com. So you can also, if you want to, you can contact me through theloftygroup.com. I can put you in touch with Katia as well. And so this is going to conclude this particular segment. Again, if you are interested in having myself or another representative affiliated with the Lofty Group to come to your organization and speak and provide career advice or even, even uh, leadership organizational development uh, strategies, please contact me. Again, just go to www.theloftygroup.com. This concludes this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>